Hi, my name is Emily Ocasio and I go to the New School of Northern Virginia. My project looked, looks at which demographics of people affect the way that newspaper covers them if they are victims of homicide. Um, my project, I went to my project with two main theoretical frameworks. The first one is the ideal victim theory. The ideal victim theory is a theory that says that society will treat victims that we perceive as innocent and vulnerable better than victims that we don't perceive as having these qualities. Um, a person's race, gender, and age are important parts of their demographics that are going to affect how society um, perceives them, including if they are perceived as ideal victims. However, beyond just those demographics individually, the way that a person's collection of demographic identities come together is a, a additionally affects the way that society perceives them as victims. Um, this idea is called intersectionality. So intersectionality is the idea that a person's individual identities are not additive, but rather the unique intersection or collection of those identities changes the way that society views them. So my project went into answering this question about why is news coverage different and how does it vary based on on uh, demographics with both the ideal victim framework and intersectionality in mind. Um, my methodology has three main parts. First, I created a database of all of the articles that the Boston Globe pub pub published um, in my time frame that were about homicides that happened in Massachusetts. Um, I began with 1.2 million and I ended up with a collection of 5,000 that was through a mixture of both manual um, sorting and a computer algorithm that helped limit them down. From, then, from there, I then matched each article with its corresponding record in, the, in an FBI database that had a collection of all of the murders that had happened in that time frame. The way I did this is through reading each article and based on information mentioned in the article, matched it with the case that made sense. Um, the, uh, the reason for doing this is because the FBI database provided a lot more comprehensive data and consistent data about every single um, article that had happened. So from there I was able to get all of the circumstance, the weapon, the date, even if that wasn't mentioned in the article. Finally, I used GPT-3, a, a large language model or a type of machine learning, to do the final label about if the article was humanized um, was written in a humanized or an impersonal way. I, I defined humanized as um, if the article talked about the victim in a way that presented them as more than just a statistic or talked about more than just the fact that they had been murdered. Um, that could be through talking about their job or a quote or their family. Um, uh, the way I used GPT-3 was through three rounds of prompting for every single article. The first two essentially just excerpted the data, and the final one is that was what asked GPT-3 if the article was humanized or impersonal or not. Um, from there, I then used the generalized linear model to run statistics and figure out which independent variables, and uh, specifically looking at race, gender, age, and the intersections between them, affect the likelihood of receiving humanized coverage. My main score is called the composite humanizing score, which considered receiving a humanized article as humanized and not receiving a humanized article or receiving no article as being treated impersonally. Um, the largest demographics I found were that young black men, so black men under 18, were 30 percentage points less likely to receive humanizing coverage than their white male counterparts. Additionally, black men of all ages were statistically significantly less likely to receive humanizing coverage than their um, white counterparts, just with a smaller percentage point difference at other age groups. Similarly, the only statistically significant um, age range for white versus black women was in the age range of 18 to 29, where black women were 23 percentage points less likely to receive humanizing coverage than their white female counterparts. Um, uh, this matters because the way we talk about people is the way that we like treat them as a human and the way that we present their demographic as a whole. Additionally, my results do align with the ideal victim framework. For example, um, young black men are, have historically been perceived as much older or less innocent than their white male counterparts. Like they're not viewed as, as innocent of children. Additionally, following the ideal victim framework, children of all genders and races receive more humanizing coverage than other ages, followed by the elderly, and women overall receive more humanizing coverage than men overall. So we see multiple ways that uh, the ideal victim framework is, um, it does help explain this data, and additionally, the importance of looking at it through an intersectional lens that shows the ways that uh, particularly black men, but young black men and a little bit of an older category of young black women are being overlooked by our media. Thank you.